Hi folks, how you doing? It is the 10th day of September 2024. We are 20, less than 24 hours away from uh, another anniversary. Um, today's about, it's about quarter till 10 on a overcast day down here in Tampa, Florida. A uh, quick video, I'm going to help my neighbor with uh, keeping the dog from getting out into the yard next door in the street in the neighborhood. Um, so a quick video. Uh, I've been looking into this Project 2025 thing. Everyone seems to be trying to either uh, uh, pull out all their hair over or completely ignore as if it's been made up. Um, and of course, as usual, the truth lies someplace in the middle. Um, and, and I will tell you, it is bad. It looks like I have dandruff. <laughs> uh, it's not dandruff. It's uh, I was moving a set of uh, pieces of lumber from my neighbor's yard to mine so I can mill it down for. Um, I was looking at it going, oh, damn, that's not good. Um, Scott, you're falling apart, man. I'm falling apart. Shit happens. Don't get old. Um, uh, so I started looking into the project 2025, and uh, guess what? It, it's it, it's not good, folks. Uh, it's not good. It's fucking 500 pages of Heritage Foundation, uh, Milton Friedman neoliberal economic ideology wet dream. Um, it is uh, remarkable in its scope and deeply concerning. If you believe in things like, oh, I don't know, um, a government, which, of course, they don't. <laughs> I wrote a very long article for it this morning. Um, I was researching it last night. Um, it is um, immense. Uh, it is 500 pages, 900 pages. The Mandate for Leadership 2025, the conservative promise. And it is put together by mainly, the, 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 the three main ones are Kevin Roberts, Paul Danz, and Steve Groves, all Heritage Foundation uh, members. And uh, we should, we should, we're going we're gonna to talk about Heritage Foundation. We're going to talk about what it means, when it started, why it started, what it was designed for, what it means uh, in 2025. And most importantly, uh, what it meant in 1981. Um, but I have this thing downloaded. And now we can access it and look at it and read it. I'm not going to read the entire 922 pages. But I am. I put a dent in it last night. And uh, wow, these guys really don't like fucking constitutional republics. You know who else didn't like constitutional republics? A guy by the name of uh, 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 Benito Mussolini um, really didn't like constitutional republics. He thought the constitutional republics and, uh, oh, I don't know, democracy uh, was a failed fucking experiment, which you'll hear quite a bit these days. Um, and these guys were with the Heritage Foundation. They shared that belief. You know... <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm getting a little sick of these fake alt fucking left people like Robert Kennedy Jr. Um, and Jimmy Dore and others trying to claim that the only, you know, progressive uh, viewpoint out there belongs to Donald Trump um, and his populist ways. And, of course, there's a part of this tour that, that, that Tucker Carlson's given I covered part of it yesterday where he was trying to sell to his audience uh, Russell Brand as the new messiah in a true Bill Carnegie kind of fucking way. Um, Book of Eli, not Dale Carnegie. Watch yesterday's video. Um, deeply troubling. Now he's trying to push, you know, Robert Kennedy Jr., uh, running around telling everybody that Donald Trump is the real populist and Donald Trump is 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 progressive and he's and and the Republicans are the party of the common man, um, and that is 
it, it, that, that's not, none of that is journalism. This whole fucking campaign, this whole tour that Tucker Carlson is doing has is, is got nothing to do with journalism. It's just sales. It's sales for Russell Brand and his rebranding into a fucking messiah figure, into a Christ figure, into a what, what the Bible will call the advocate will come back. He's, he, th that's what yesterday was. And then <laughs> today's video, talking about Robert Kennedy Jr., trying to push this idea on lefties, on alt-lefties, that they need to vote for fucking Donald Trump because he's the only progressive out there and his plans are fucking, you know, populist and, and designed to help the common man is fucking laughable. It is laughable. Now, that's not to say go vote for Kamala or go vote for a third party. I'm just saying you got to call, you got to call it out for what it is. It's absurd and on its face value. <clears throat> it's as absurd in 2024 to think that Donald Trump is going to govern as a populist after running as a populist after what happened in 2016 and then 2016 to 2020. It's as absurd as being an Obamaite in 2012 thinking, well, this time he's going to give us the change he promised us last time. That's how absurd it is. You, you, you have to be... The hopium is, is, is coursing deep through your fucking veins because it's not. And if you think... I know a lot of people out there, and I talk to, talk to small business owners, and they think it's okay because the taxes will be fine and the taxes will be better under Donald Trump. I just want you to remember, most of you who were saying that are too young to remember. But in the article down below, there's evidence showing you what Reaganomics really did to us and what it really did for the super rich people. By the way... On the stage with Robert Kennedy Jr., super rich family, was Tucker Carlson, super rich, and his super rich wife, and some fucking other guy who was a candidate who's also a businessman and super fucking rich. You had three super rich people telling you, yes, Trump. He's, he's the Republicans vote for Trump. He's in it for the common man. When Project 2025 is a very real thing, it's a very real thing that Trump only fucking disavowed once word was leaking out and people started figuring out what 2025 was and they started covering it and then Trump had to go, oh, no, no, that's got nothing to do with me. It's got everything to do with him. He didn't write it. He's not fucking bright enough to write it. But 200 motherfuckers did. And they worked on it for three years. This is their big, big plan. And it came from, it started with the Heritage Foundation. They wrote one like it in 1981 for, for Ronald Reagan. And they boast that 60% of what they put out there for their mandate in, 20, in, 2000, in, in, in 1981 was followed by the fucking and adopted by the Reagan administration. And they fully expect to have the same, if not more, adopted by Donald Trump. Uh, it is deeply concerning. It is deeply concerning. If you want to just throw away the government that was made of the people, by the people, and for the people, then be my guest. Uh, the people at the Heritage Foundation do. And so to people like Tucker Carlson, and Robert uh, Kennedy Jr., and whoever that other guy was on there, and probably Jimmy Dore. Jimmy Dore is also wealthy. He's not as wealthy as the Kennedys, obviously, but he's working on it. You understand? Bringing back Reaganomics, bringing back Milton Friedman's neoliberal trickle-down economic ideology will not help the common man in this country. It didn't before. It won't now. 
Trump wasn't populist before, he won't be now. Barack Obama made no change before, he didn't the second time. Fool me once. What's that idiotic definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. You're not going to get different results. And that's the whole point of Project 2025. They don't want different results. 200 plus people writing for the Heritage Foundation, created by the Lewis Powell memo, by the way, which called for a fascist fucking overthrow of the government of the United States of America and putting corporations in charge of everything. That's what formed the Lewis, the, 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 the Heritage Foundation. That's what the Heritage Foundation was, was made to promote. And they are still promoting it to this day. And if you think somehow, magically, the 200 fascists who wrote this thing somehow now care about the common man, it is... It is childlike naivete. It just is. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be insulting. Plenty of people on the left, I tried to tell them in 2008, and especially in 2012, stop it. You're lying to yourself. You're whistling past the graveyard. Kamala Harris has got her fucking problems, obviously. But she's not out there promoting a fucking program that will literally bring back Reaganomics. She's not out there promoting the idea that government doesn't exist. There's no such thing as government. Why do people who worship at the altar, the, their, their, their holy document is the Lewis Powell Memo, why do people say government doesn't exist, government bad, government shouldn't exist? Because the Lewis Powell memo is all about replacing of the people, by the people, for the people with corporate rule. By the way, that's the same ideology that they have at the World Economic Forum the number one advocate for the public-private partnerships, which is fascism. Rule of corporations, by corporations, for corporations. <coughs> you might not like this, but this is the truth. Project 2025 isn't actually called Project 2025, but rather the Mandate for Leadership 2025 program, which is a reference back to the original Mandate for Leadership 1981, in which the economic brick of Milton Friedman neoliberal austerity was dropped on us under the name of Reagan economics. Reaganomics. It took every man on Main Street some time to figure out they've been had and finally revolt. 35 more years to be precise. There's been no sort shortage of big promises since Reagan's It's Morning Again in America, but in the end, they all left the middle class staring into thin wallets while their manipulators were living high on the hog. Think about that. That's true. The wealth gap just took off. The rate of pay for the average worker versus the rate of pay for the average CEO just took the fuck off. That's why people like Robert Kennedy Jr., Tucker Carlson, that other fucking dude, whoever the hell he is, and then, of course, Jimmy Dore, because they're all rich. It's classism. Continuing. The failed big ideas began with Reaganomics. The stimulating effect of its tax cuts was supposed to trickle down to the masses, but the flow had the viscosity of molasses and it stuck with the ultra-rich. Under Reaganomics, listen to this, under Reaganomics, the ultra-rich had their taxes cut sharply, about half. 
a millionaire who was paying 700000 in taxes in the 70s, so her taxes cut to 350000 in the in the 80s. But what was he or she going to do with the $350,000 windfall? Some spend it on conspicuous consumption, yachts. We buy a lot of yachts in America these days. But many decided to fund think tanks and hire economists to support their ideology. Do you understand? That's where the Heritage Foundation came from. While others used the windfall to influence politicians and shape laws, and so tax cuts became a vicious circle in which the wealth begat more wealth and still more influence. More influence from the ultra-rich, more influence from the corporations. Then came the North Atlantic Free Trade Association, or NAFTA initiated by George W. Bush and eventually signed into law by Bill Clinton. It's a uniparty system. They are all serving the interest of big business and billionaires. Clinton promised that NAFTA would promote more growth, more equality, and create 200,000 jobs in the country by 1995 alone. Of course, he failed to mention how many hundreds of thousands of jobs would be destroyed at the same time, but few noticed such nuances at the time. Somebody did. And somebody did. That's a guy by the name of Ross Perot. And he got 19% of the vote in, two, in 1992, telling everybody that NAFTA was going to suck jobs right out of this country. And he was right. But NAFTA was a direct fucking offspring of Reaganomics. It was a continuation of Reaganomics. Project 2025, for short, was put together at the Heritage Foundation, who at this point believe they have to hit the ground running fast in order to implement all the changes they want before folks figure out what they're doing. Quote, in January 2024, Roberts, the Roberts from, I'm sorry, I should have specified, Kevin Roberts, Roberts said that he did not believe Joe Biden won the 2020 presidential election, neither do I, and also said that he saw Heritage's role as institutionalizing Trumpism, adding the Trump administration with the best intention of intentions simply got a slow start. And Heritage and our allies in Project 2025 believe that must never be repeated. The Project 2025 people believe government doesn't exist. Therefore, they can and will make massive cuts to all sorts of agencies and programs. Quote directly from page 14 of their mandate. Project 2025, there is no such thing as the government. There are just people who work for the government and wield its power and who, at almost every opportunity, wield it to serve themselves first and everyone else a distant second. This is not a, fa a failing of one nation, a socialist party, but inherent in human nature, end quote. <coughs> this, is, this is like saying, for all of you out there, who might disagree with me. Well, it's perfectly right, Scott. That's what they do. This is like saying that because you see one homeless guy begging for money on the side of the road and then get in a fucking Mercedes, every fucking homeless guy with scabs on his face and fucking shit in his fucking beard and, 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 and looks like an Auschwitz victim, he's also got to be fucking rich. And, you take one or two or three bad examples, usually the neocons are the worst examples, the same neocons who helped write this piece of shit document. But you take those guys and go, oh, look, here's an example. Ergo, everything is bad. They're all bad. That's not uh, indicative of what government does or what government's supposed to do. Here's the point. I just want to make this very perfectly clear to you. When we want to go invade a country and overthrow its government because they're not giving us, they're, they're, they, they didn't accept the fucking Pfizer jabs, so we had to kill five fucking leaders of other countries, four in Africa and, and of course, one in Haiti. Um, now I can't put this on YouTube. I don't give a shit. We have to get rid of them because their government is in the way of Pfizer and their profits. And Department of Defense and Defense Threat Reduction Agency and EcoHealth Alliance and what they were doing 
with this whole fucking thing in the first place. Governments got in the way. There's no such thing as government. Government bad. We used to have in this country what's called a regulated market economy. That's what they have in Russia. That's what they have in China. There's no communism anymore, with the ex possible exception of fucking North Korea. There's no communism anymore. There's regulated market economies, and our neoliberal masters hate them. Why? Because they are regulated. Because they don't, they don't allow big business to do whatever the fuck big business wants to do. Do you understand? China was neoliberal for a while. And then along came a transition and a guy who's running the place now and his and through, and through the power of that and seeing what neoliberalism was doing to China, they've transitioned. And since then, they have risen billions of people out of poverty. They have made life better. Not through communism, through a regulated market economy. And 1928, this country, we were in bad off, we were in bad shape. 1934 rolls around and we developed this regulated market economy. Not laissez-faire economics like we had in the 20s. But we had a regulated market economy. And from 1934 to 1979, <coughs> we built the very first middle class the world has ever seen, human, our human race has ever known, ever, ever, human species has ever known. If you use government as a governor, like an, like an old engine, <laughs> to withhold big businesses' greedy nature, um, to, as a, as a, as a, as a stop, as a, as a backstop, um, not allowing it to go but certain to a certain. Of course, big business is going to tell you that's awful. How dare you? You shouldn't do that. You should you should free up the markets. Let them do as they please. Laissez faire. Let it be. But of course, when you do that, the nature of the kinds of people who end up gravitating to the top of these businesses and these financial institutions uh, will play out. And they will do things like the deliberate destruction of our economy in 2007 and 2008 with the, with the uh, subprime mortgage crisis. They do that on purpose and other things like forcing jabs in people's arms of untested stuff. You understand? There has to be government agreed upon by the people preferably voted for by the people, to put regulations, to put a governor on not growth itself, because China, as a regulated market economy, is, jo is enjoying the, the, the best growth of their fucking existence. And Russia, even still, after what we've been doing to them with this fucking Ukraine thing that we started, by the way, they're, they're enjoying great growth. They're enjoying uh, a very prosperous time as a regulated market economy. But we don't want that. Free market economy. Free market. Let big business do big business. The invisible hand will keep it all in check. That's not happening. And it's not going to happen. But that's what they want at the Heritage Foundation. And that's what the people who wrote Project 2025 want. They also understand this. Now, I, 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 this is just a rundown of this. I'll show you some more of it just briefly, but you can go and read the article. There'll be a link to it down below. Mm -hmm. Understand this. These people, uh, again, Trump has said, oh, no. <laughs> but a number of these people, when you go look at the at the actual document, they'll, they'll give you the backgrounds, bios of the main 20 people who, who contributed to it, and or 50 people who contributed to it. <laughs> half of them were in the, in the Trump administration last time, and half of those uh, have every intention of being back uh, in the Trump administration in the next time. 
they have, they share something called the unitary executive theory, um, which was promoted most recently by a guy by the name of Dick Cheney. Now, I know, like, fucking Robert F. Kennedy Jr. will tell you, oh, Dick Cheney's promoting, he's, he's endorsing Kamala Harris. So that tells you right there, she's the neocon and not these people over at the Heritage Foundation who are pure neocons. Well, again, do a little research. It wasn't Dick Cheney who came out and said, I support fucking uh, uh, Kamala Harris. It was Liz Cheney, his daughter, who, by the way, <laughs> is 100% on board with Project 2025. Why would someone like Liz Cheney come out and tell people that her father, Dick Cheney, supports Kamala Harris if she's actually on the side of fucking Trump because Trump is going to usher in Project 2025? Why would she do that? She would do that because right now they are concerned about Undecideds, and they really covet, the Trump people do. The alt-left folks who can't bring themselves to fucking vote for Kamala Harris, knowing who Kamala Harris is. So, Liz Cheney comes out and says, Dick Cheney's all on the side of Kamala Harris. And of course, that's repeated over and over again ad infinitum by people like Robert F. Kennedy Jr., uh, with the alt-left people watching him going, yeah, I guess that means something right there, doesn't it? And you, you say that, and you, you, Bobby Kennedy says Trump is actually the progressive? I'm sold. It's not true. It's not true. If you look at Project 2025, they promote something that was absurd when it came out of Dick Cheney's mouth, the idea of the unitary executive, which is, and it's, it's, it's ingrained over chapters in this thing, Project 2025, and they lay out how it works, how the unitary executive theory works for all these different fucking departments. And according to them, what they need and what the Founding Fathers wanted, according to them, the Founding Fathers were getting away from a totalitarian, authoritarian, royal, royalty-based system, a king, where a king makes all the fucking, a monarch, a monarchy. We decided to get away from that and create this constitutional republic, this experiment, this grand experiment, as Abraham Lincoln once said. But according to the people at the Heritage Foundation and these people who, who wrote the Project 2025, that's not really what they were doing. What they were really doing was setting up our own monarchy. Because according to them, the president is in charge of all of these fucking divisions in the government. And his decree uh, instructs them exactly what they're supposed to do and how they're supposed to do it and who's supposed to. It isn't just that he puts people in charge of the different fucking administration, the, the different parts of the administration, but he actually he can write decrees, and and he can he can he can privatize the entire public education system. He can do away with social security. He can write decrees. Because he is the unitary executive, the one person in charge of the whole thing. And this is what Dick Cheney was calling for right after 9-11. Why? It's the same thing. The same thing with Project 2025 authors and with what's and kind of with what happened in 1981, but certainly right after 9-11. And that was uh, they want... His, the presidency, the office of the presidency to make sweeping, have sweeping powers to dictate everything, every aspect of government, just willy nilly from his fucking signing statement from his fucking desk. But it's really not him. You understand? 
because he's going to be surrounded, and it's, it's written in the paper, by his advisors, his close, which means them. Which means an unelected body of fucking people, some nebulous, hard to see, shadow government kind of group, hanging out in the Oval Office while Donald Trump is eating beautiful cake or playing golf, they're the ones sitting there writing the shit down and doing this and doing that and dictating what happens to the Department of Justice, Department of Education. You understand? Health and Human Services, they're the ones doing it. And under Project 2025, if they get to implement it in full, it's basically a king, a monarch. Only the king is out playing golf and the technocrats are doing it. You understand? It's fucking wild what they want. <laughs> a president who refuses to do so and uses his or her office to reimpose constitutional authority over federal policymaking can begin to correct decades of corruption and remove thousands of bureaucrats from the position of trust they have long so abused. Right. Reimpose constitutional authority over policymaking. They believe that this was the, the, the creation of a fucking monarch is what the founding fathers wanted, not the creation of a constitutional republic with checks and balances, even though the paperwork is right there in front of you. Let me continue. Reaganomics was the beginning of the downfall of the American working class. By every metric and every graph you can see in 1981, the wealthiest got richer while the working man lost ground. There was a plan put in place back then called the Mandate for Leadership. It was the economic brick that was dropped on the people of Chile in 1973. Project 2025 is also called the Mandate for Leadership and is an attempt to bring it all back. Page two of this new 2020, Project 2025 document. Mandate for Leadership was published in January 1981, the same month Ronald Reagan was sworn into his presidency. By the end of that year, more than 60% of his recommendations had been made become policy, and Reagan was on his way to ending stagflation, reviving America's confidence and prosperity, and winning the Cold War. Now, this couldn't sound more like Dick Cheney if he said it himself. Screw the environment, drill, baby, drill, and take that oil from wherever we can, and we will be better off. All of us, of course, didn't work out that way in Iraq, did it? Page 13 from the Project 2025. The next conservative president should go beyond merely defending America's energy interest, but go on offense, <laughs> asserting them around the world resource wars. They are literally calling for resource wars, stealing the fucking natural resources of other countries. That's from page 13 in this plan. America's vast reserves of oil and natural gas are not an environmental problem. They are the lifeblood of economic growth. American dominance of the global energy market would be a good thing for the world and more importantly for we the people. There you go. That's it. The common man. Let's use the common man's children, the boys and girls, and put them in fucking uniforms and give them fucking guns and send them off someplace to get those fucking resources so that Exxon, Chevron, Mobil, uh, all of these fucking Halliburton can make billions upon billions of dollars. And we can control. Do you see how this is all about control? <coughs> control controlling the economies, controlling the dollar, controlling the fucking energies. This is the project for the new American century. This is rebuilding America's defenses. This is pure fucking neoconism neoliberal neoconism if you don't understand the difference neoliberal is an economic ideology neoconism is a political one listen to this 
I've talked about the Lewis Powell memo until I was blue in the face, and I've explained to you, and I've, I've got you links right there. You can go and look and read yourself. Talking about the Heritage Foundation, the Heritage Foundation are the ones who did this. Joseph Kors, by the way, is a fucking Nazi. The Heritage Foundation was founded on February 16, 1973, during Nixon administration by Paul Weyrich, Edwin Fulner, and, of course, Nazi Joseph Kors. Growing out of the new business activist movement, inspired by the Powell Memorandum, discontent, dis, discontent with Richard Nixon's embrace of liberal consensus, and the non-polemical, uh, whatever the fuck that word is, cautious nature of existing think tanks. What does that mean? That means they came to Nixon and said, we're going to drop the economic brick on fucking the people of America. And Nixon said, fuck you. We are all Keynesians now. You can take your little act and go down to Chile in 1973 and try it down there. We're not doing it here. They got mad. That's why, that's why Nixon was fucking impeached. <coughs> Had nothing to do with Watergate. He wasn't willing to do that. And these are the same kinds, of, these are the kinds of people who worked to get rid of him because he didn't do that. Written in 1971 to the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, the Lewis Powell Memo was a blueprint for corporate domination of American democracy. And here's, of course, a link to both of those. You can read this one, you can read that one. The Lewis Powell Memo in 1971 was a plan to bring straight fascism to the United States of America, and the Heritage Foundation was created in its wake as the flagship think tank to help facilitate that transition. They hated Nixon for not dropping Milton Friedman's neoliberal brick on America, as is explained in the quote above. Their Mandate for Leadership 1981 plan helped usher in Reaganomics, which had disastrous effects on the American working class. It's a good thing RFK Jr. fans don't read very much. And there's a breakdown of, this, of the specifics from Matthew Schaefer. Uh, say what you will, but Matthew Schaefer knows economics. This is a breakdown of, of what... Reaganomics did to us. As bad as things are now, imagine what would happen if they dropped a, an economic brick on us again. But you know who's going to benefit from that? Big business, big corporations, and wealthy people like Robert F. Kennedy Jr., Tucker Carlson, Jimmy Dore. You might as well call Project 2025, the Project for the New American Century, because they advocate the same things, including absolute control of the world's energy resources taken by any means necessary. And they do. Endless oil and liquid natural gas wars. Makes you wonder why such progressive thought leaders like Jimmy Dore and RFK Jr. and others are endorsing Trump, knowing full well that such a large and influential think tank has been crafting a new Reagan-era economic brick to drop on all of us just as fast as possible, as soon as he is in office. Well, remember, Jimmy and Bobby are rich, and the rich do very well under Milton Friedman economic plans, but not so much for the rest of us. I mean, listen... Here's the other thing that we should... I also link you to Benito Mussolini's Doctrine of Fascism. If you think I'm just making this shit up, I also link you to, fairly, I'm, I'm fair, uh, an article talking about how Donald Trump had to finally speak out against this. However, they have... Uh, this is the video, you can watch the video where he's sitting there with this fucking guy, this billionaire and this billionaire and this billionaire's family, uh, talking about how this plan is the plan for the common man. It's unbelievable. But remember this, and keep this in mind if you do go and read it. I want you to understand something. I want you to understand something. Um, and that is that th there's problems. They understand this. Um, they've been working on this Project 2025 since 2021, but they see this happening. They see BRICS nations. They see the fucking de-dollarization. They understand this. There's going to be some problems. And as there are some problems for the super fucking wealthy and corporations, uh, they're going to need a steady hand on the fucking, uh, on the rudder of this fucking ship in order to steer the wealthy and the corporations through 
tumultuous times. They don't trust fucking Kamala Harris and those people to do it. What they would trust is a monarch. What they would trust is an Augusto Pinochet. What they would trust are the kinds of people that they always install when they go to another country and they impose via bombing or by a color revolution or by stolen elections uh, this kind of economic ideology. And it will not make things better for us. Even if you're a small business owner and you think somehow or another, for some fucking reason, when things were... It, people said, well, I, 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 I was a small business owner and I was doing better under fucking Trump. What do you mean you're doing better under Trump? What are you talking about? The, the goddamn economy shut down because of fucking COVID as soon as fucking Trump left office. At, actually, at the end of fucking Trump's fucking stay in office. What are you talking about? We didn't get out of it until 2022, 2023. We didn't start rebuilding until 2022, 2023. So, of course, you were doing better under fucking Trump. What are you talking about? I, I hope some of you have been around long enough to know and to have lived through uh, the economic revolution that was Reaganomics in 1981. Because you didn't do better as a small business owner. In fact, a lot of small businesses went belly up. Because believe it or not, you know, these folks at the Heritage Foundation and the Lewis Powell Memo fucking worshipers and the folks at the World Economic Forum, they're not about raising all boats with the even tide. What they are about is funneling everything up. Funneling everything up. And small business owners get trapped and get, get, get wiped out by the tidal wave. That's just what they are. You know, and if you want to bring these people to office, if you want to bring that kind of fucking ideology to office, then by all means vote for it. I'm not saying you've got a better fucking option than, than Kamala Harris. I don't endorse any of them. I expose both sides for what they are. It is a one-party system. But there are differences. The difference between Coke and Pepsi. They're both fucking ruthless goddamn corporations which will do anything to make a fucking nickel. But there is a competition. It's the same thing with the fucking Democrats and Republicans. They all serve the same masters, and yet they're going to squabble amongst each other to see who gets the chance, the opportunity to serve the master, to be the, the main house N-word for another four fucking years. This thing with Project 2025, it is not, they are in a rush. They know that Donald Trump is not going to be able to serve a third term. So he is, by definition, upon entry in January of 2025, a lame duck. So who gives a shit if his fan base is immediately turned off by what he does? This is the same thing that happened in 2012 with Barack Obama. You understand? Stop fooling yourself. Stop whistling past the graveyard. Neither of these individuals have your best interest at heart. Neither of them are populist, truly populist. And I'll tell you, somebody who's, who's, who's the least populist of all of them, and Robert Kennedy fucking Jr. That guy is the biggest fucking fraud you will ever fucking meet. Ever meet. Uh, maybe short of fucking, okay, uh, Rabbi Shmuley, and uh, then, of course, Russell Brand. This is problem, Project 2025. Look, get it, download it, read it. Read it. See what they say. See who wrote it. See what it means. It is a complete remake of our constitutional republic. It is a scrapping. They say it's all based on the, on the wishes of the founding fathers. It is not. It is a scrapping of what the founding fathers created. And it is replacing it. Because if you go and look at that ode to fascism thing that, that, that Mussolini wrote, that has a link to it in there, you will understand that these folks believe wholeheartedly 
that government has no place of the people, by the people, and for the people. That democracy is a failed experiment. That you need the corporate CEO types, the business leaders, to make decisions and dictate what happens, not only domestically, but foreign policy as well. And if you sit back and say to me right now, well, Scott, that makes sense because, you know, if you can run a business, you can run a government. Well, congratulations, you now share the same ideology as the World Economic Forum. You might as well vote for fucking Klaus Schwab. Thank you for your time.